Hello, Kitty. In the last video, we talked about how a standalone written prose can serve as a story map for our comic book panels, and we listened to a chapter excerpt from the original written story called The Wolf and the Boy. The original written story is around 10 pages long in regular text format. It's a complete story on its own wherein it can be published as it is, or it can be read out loud like a bedtime story for your own little kitty. Obviously, this is not like an outline, which is more commonly used as a story map by comic book creators. An outline tells the story in its skeletal form, so it's much shorter. I've tried making an outline of a story to create comic books in the past, because I thought that's how I'm supposed to do it. Unfortunately, those outlines never blossomed into a completed project. That's when I realized what works for most people doesn't always work for me. You might find this out yourself when you try some of my methods. I share them knowing that it's not going to be applicable for most comic book creators, but to some, it could be the trick that gets them past a hurdle. My difficulty with outlines is in the lack of a narrative, a visual narrative. It feels like I'm looking at a grocery list not a comprehensive story. Because of its skeletal format, it leaves out the bridging imagery in between key points of the story. I was quite late into trying a different approach. It was 2016 when I decided to try writing a simple short story instead of an outline. I wanted to see if that would work to get me to start and finish a small comic book project. That experiment was what got me to create Mumbo's Jumbo. It worked so well that I've been applying it ever since. The reason it worked was due to the use of visual language in the written prose. Visual language made the imagery clear, but not detailed. No, no, that's different, Kitty. When we use visual language, we are showing the reader what's going on, instead of telling the reader a list of things to imagine. Confused yet, Kitty? I know. I'm having a hard time explaining myself. Hang in there. I have something to show that will help us make sense of all this show-don't-tell business. Here, let's take a look at this paragraph from the Wolf and the Boy chapter. The sky was red when Little Wolf heard a truck engine. The strong smell of big game was approaching. Little Wolf watched as the father and the boy took it in the shed, and prepared the meat. That right there is an example of using visual language to tell a story, or a scene from a story. It doesn't get into specific details, yet it reveals a lot of what's going on. Now, let's break it down into two passages, and for comparison, let's recreate the text with a detailed approach, instead of a visual approach. Passage 1 Showing. The sky was red when Little Wolf heard a truck engine. The strong smell of big game was approaching. Telling. It was sunset when Little Wolf saw the boy and his father return with a fresh kill, an adult buck loaded in the back of the truck. Second passage. Showing. Little Wolf watched as the father and the boy took it in the shed and prepared the meat. Telling Little Wolf watched the father and the boy hang the deer in a shed across the fence and prepare cuts of venison meat. You see, Kitty, writing the complete story doesn't have to be detailed about describing a scene. If we're using visual language, it's enough to paint the scenes of the story in our minds. Now an outline, because of its skeletal format, it looks like a list of details. Details of key points in the story. It's filled with gaps and blind spots by design. And because of that, I have trouble working with an outline. It feels like I'm getting instructions from an undecided and insecure client, who intentionally left out information so that he's free of the responsibility when I decide to fill in the gaps with my own ideas. Sounds silly, because that person writing the outline and drawing the comic book panels 
is the same person. But I noticed I'm more committed to finishing a project when I'm working with a story that can stand alone on its own. I prefer illustrating a story that's complete and bold. By bold, I mean a story that reveals things I normally keep inside my head, which if you can look inside, you will find out my head contains both good thoughts and bad thoughts. We're here to tell stories, Kitty. We're not creating comics to be right or to signal our virtuousness. We're not creating comics to teach anybody anything. Our comic books are here to make people think. Gosh, Kitty, if there's one takeaway lesson I'd like you to bring home with the bacon, look at your comic book like it's a real person you've met. A real person is interesting for both their strengths and their flaws. A real person doesn't hide behind a masked persona for the sake of getting attention. You see, Kitty, I view the comic book creation process as having parallels to raising a child into an adult, taking great care in the process leading up to the last stage, where by the time it's due for printing, it hits the age of independence. And I can't wait to kick it out of the house and give it the freedom to interact with the world. All right, that's all for now. I'll talk to you later.